What up YouTube, Mike here for PatBangers.com and in this tutorial we want to show you JBridge and JBridge is a really handy tool when it comes to convert your 32-bit plugins into 64-bit so we can use them in your modern audio environment. Um, you can find JBridge on JStuff weblog. It's jstuff.wordpress.com and we will put a link for you into the description so you can easily visit the site. Um, you can download the demo version there or you can buy it. It's about 15 euros, so it's very inexpensive and it does a really great job. After you download it, you just install it and if you're on a Windows computer, make sure both the, um, the JBridge and your host is running in administrator mode. Otherwise, it can cause some, some errors. And after you install it, you just start the program. It's called JBridger. And from here on, it's totally self-explaining. So step one, select your VST host's architecture. In my case, in my case, it's 64-bit, uh, so we choose this. And then in step two, you have a bunch of options. For example, confirm each file individually. And um, this is really handy when you um, want to choose exactly which plugin you want to convert into 64-bit. I just want to process my whole VST folder, so I let this unchecked. Second point is throughout file analysis. I let this checked. Replicate subdirectory structure in destination folder. You can choose if you want to want to have this. If you want to have um, other subfolders for your plugins like contact, absinthe, stuff like that. I don't really need this. I want all the plugins into one folder. Create bridging files for 32-bit plugins. I don't need this. I only want to create 64-bit plugins. And down here, we choose create bridging files inside a directory out specified. And this is highly recommended. And it's uh, very useful because all your plugins will be processed into a folder you choose. It's not messing up your VST folder with um, the converted plugins. And also I would recommend to check don't add .32.64 in file names in destination folder because otherwise you get um, plugin names like contact.64.dll which is really not necessary because we only process 32-bit um, plugins right here. So we choose to create bridging files, click on it. And in the next step, we select our VST plugins folder that we want to process. So on Windows, you go to your standard uh, VST plugins folder and make sure you're in the program x86 folder because that's where your 32 bit plugins are stored. You click on VST plugins, hit OK. And next step, select destination directory folder. You go to your regular program folder. Um, where your 64-bit plugins are located and you can create a new folder. I already did create one called it bridged. You select it and hit OK and after that it starts converting. So now it says one file is bridged for using because that's probably the only plugin I didn't already have converted into 64-bit. Hit OK. Now you just go to your folder C programs VST plugins bridged. As you can see, all your plugins are now in your bridged folder and you can use them in your DAW. So if we open up Studio One, go to our Effects tab, and you can see there are new folders called JBridge. Digital fish phones, for example, there's my Spitfish plugin. I really like it. Um, it's a really good de-esser, it's freeware, and I couldn't use it all the time because it was only 32 bit, but now it's working, so we can create a new track. Open up the mixer, put it on the track, and as you can see, it adds a little container around it. And if your plugin crashes, which could happen from time to time. I mean, it runs really stable, but from time to time it crashes depending on the plugin. Some plugins run really smooth without any problems. Some plugins crash from time to time. There's a settings tab 
where you can choose a bunch of options and you can just play around with them and see if anything goes better. If not, just uncheck the things you did before and um, try other stuff. Sometimes performance mode works really good for plugins. Um, sometimes a sluggish uh, GUI hack works really good. It's really depending on the plugin, you just need to test it out yourself. So I hope this helps you guys because we got a lot of messages on my plugins are not showing up and it's most often um, the problem that it's not a 64 bit plugin. So if you like the video, like it on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash padbangers, uh, follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash padbangers, or for all our German subscribers, we are now running a German blog, padbangers.com, where you can find all the tutorials written down in German language. And we also have a lot of freeware going on on the site where we collect the best links from all over the web for you with free drum loops, um, free samples, free effects, stuff like that. So come over, check us out, let us know what you think, comment on the posts, send us messages if you have any questions. We're always glad if, you, if we can help out. That's it for this week. Mike for PatBangers.com. Peace!